my god. <laughs> I had high hopes until it started raining. <laughs> Man, what a weekend. <laughs> It was so slick, it was insane. I'm like, how are people not dying? This is her new love. A new love? Yes. Yeah. I've never experienced something like that. That is the time I've seen of the past. And this is how we roll. I'll be America's, America's is like a movie, mate. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> Every time you go, America's just more insane, I swear. We love it, man. We love coming to America. Smoke on the water. <laughs> mm. I've never seen anything like it. I've been to Wyndham before, but we're very isolated within Snowshoe. So it's just crazy. It's just a tiny little town on, on a mountain, you know, surrounded by bears. Snowshoe for Tarni is pretty much the same as Phoebe. It's a bit of a kind of kryptonite. As a team, it's never been a great experience, I'd say. My track record there is not great. We came here in 21, and it was the start of Tani's fatigue to racing, and I hate to say it, but working towards the concussion that she had, you know, and looking back, you know, there's all the signs and, you know, you can join the dots together. Like I've said, I've not really mastered snowshoe, so I'll just be happy to, to take it on and see where I get. I just want to challenge myself. Yeah, Oliver Zwar was having probably one of the best qualifying runs he's had this year. Um, after the final split in the J, he's 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 crashed and, and broken his wrist. So that's pretty much him out for the rest of the season, and he won't be joining us on the American tour. <laughs> because Ollie's injured this week, we're down a mechanic. Um, so it's just me and Angus out here. We normally just have one rider each anyway, so to take on Rudy between us is not a big deal. <laughs> Commitment. Determination oh, is often the first chapter in the Book of Excellence. Snowshoe's a weird one because it's always been quite a sketchy track because of all the rocks and things like that. It's a flat track, it's peddly, it's slippy and yeah, I don't like rock gardens and it's literally one from top to bottom. The track in Snowshoe, even when it's dry, it's treacherous in the rocks, so when it's wet, it's, it's even harder. There's always a chance that you hit a rock a little bit funny and you'll get knocked offline. And to have the mental strength that you need to not let that affect you is quite a big thing. So having snowshoe on the circuit once a year, even though some riders don't like it, even though it is unpredictable, even though it is probably dangerous at World Cup speeds, I think it's give or take it's needed, you know. Yeah, like that. Just like that. Should I film you? There he is though, oh, shit where is he? Yeah. <laughs> Snowshoe's a challenge for me, I was thinking before we got here, I've, like, I've never really gotten well with it. I've had, I think I've raced here twice. I've podiumed both times I've been here, but then like the first time we came here, I came off of 
like shoulder surgery. The next time was when I was dealing with my slip discs in my neck, so I don't feel like I've had a real good chance at snowshoe. Phoebe's injured herself here. She's crashed quite a lot. Well, Phoebe's has been here twice now. Once she was helicoptered off, and the other time she won qualifying by 30 seconds and then went into finals was pretty much eight seconds up with the first split, but then took a massive one and ended up off the podium. You know, she's looking to come back and she's looking to make amends for, and, and she's been growing in confidence all year. So fingers crossed if, yeah, if she can pull it together, then she should be up there with the rest of them. Yeah, so Phoebe Gale, snowshoe. Uh, three years on the trot, snowshoe comes out on top. That's quite satisfying. What's happened, Phoebe? Um, I played the worst one of my life at snowshoe. Actually, no, lots of like last year's one was worse, but this one was pretty close. I went around the corner and there's like a rock that fucking is right in the way. Couldn't over bars on that. Stupid, and then got stuck in my bike. I would have qualified, like, fine. And then I thought, that run was just like... Average. Yeah. What was it like up to that point? Just trying too hard. Why did I do that? I could have qualified, like, fine. Shit. That's a lesson that you probably had to learn at some point in time. Um, you learned it then. Elite is so hard, you know. In junior, I knew exactly on my run if I was going to win or not. Interval tomorrow should be fine. The women's racing now is like, it's just good, it's deep, you know, and even this year in Val Soli, the whole women's podium, the top five, was as tight as the men's podium. And the ladies race in snowshoe this year, the top three were 0.6 of a second apart. So that's tighter than the men's racing. Like that's, that just historically has never happened. Historically, like 20, say 15, 16, 17, 18, especially when Tane started battling it out with Rachel, it'd be Tane, maybe Miriam if she wasn't injured, Rachel probably out front and it'd be those three battling out, and then fourth and fifth could be 10 seconds, 14 seconds back. You could get a podium, it'd be 15 seconds off the winner. 2023 was the season when all of a sudden the women's field is just like mind-blowing. Whereas before it was Anne-Caroline Chausson, then Sabrina Jeanier, then Tracy Mosley, then Rachel Atherton. Just like a one woman far ahead. And we could have had that with Miriam Ravalli or Cami the last few years, but somehow all the women have just kind of gone with the flow. And now we've got five women that are capable of anything and five more that want to be capable of the podium every weekend. So it's pretty sick, like it's cool to be involved in. The racing has got tighter and I think the girls that, like for example, Valley's cracked it, you know, Nina's got a lot better in the past few years and a lot more consistent. And then you have someone like Monica Hashnik who has found a lot more consistency as well now and they kind of results that before were all over the place and now they're super consistent and we see them in the top three top five all the time but because the times are tighter and there's more women and we've had like three juniors from last year come up but we're already doing podium times so you know they have to slot in and you've already got your top 10 finalists so that's the only thing you know we have 10 women that go through and all 10 are capable of getting a podium so it was tricky when you come back from an injury like that and everyone's all of a sudden like the level's gone from where you left it to like here so not only have you got to come back at your normal level, but you've also got to then step it up. Tanya Seagrave, Snowshoe, West Virginia, 2019. Miriam smoked her in the lower rock gardens. Uh, we didn't race there in 2020 because of COVID. We went back in 2021. Did the race, got on the podium, got absolutely crucified yet again in the rock garden. Here we are, 2023. What is going on? Oh, don't bend your torso. I'm not bending my torso. <laughs> oh, that's better. Thank you. And thank you. The jumping one where you Come go on. like that. Go on, forward back. Oh, oh, that's that's it. It. Jeez. There you are. Oh! But stand like, stand in, 
Oh, yes. Yeah, so good. I'm taking lessons. There we are. So good. Oh. Right, as we're so <laughs> at downhill, dance. maybe we can take up dance, dance. because, yeah. It's a wild card for me. Uh, it just depends. This is like, I don't think this is a course she likes to throw down on, but is she capable of throwing down on this course? This person that I think would be like, could light this place up if she just like, but and she just gets her style on, would be Tony Seagrave. She's due. She's, she's lit. Uh, she came back from that head injury. You know, she looks good. She's been gaining form. This is a course to throw down on that, you know, you got to take chances on, and it's going to feel like if you come off, it's not going to feel good. Me and Tony do so many chats and debriefs and like I understand her as a racer and how she wins or loses races on, on different tracks quite well. The idea was to, to focus on maximizing her strengths on track, which is you know the upper sections and potentially the lower section, like right to the finish line, and then deal with the rocks as best we could. I think after the last block, I know that my pace is top three. I was actually really scared, just like the semis round was so difficult and I could barely hold on. So I was really scared going up for my finals and I, I kind of remember having to dig real deep and, and find, a, find a zone. You improved Tani Seagrave and performed like insanely all week long in snowshoe. Like it was measured, it was controlled, she didn't crash once and it was slick and unpredictable and pretty much everyone was on the floor at least once. <laughs> what a weekend, yeah no it's actually been like it's, it's a good end to the weekend really. Like for her to get on a podium and it's, it's a track, she just needs more fitness and we all know that, you know and when that comes back then she should be pushing higher up the ladder, so let, let's wait and see. Ah, oh, so happy. Feelings and everything, T. <laughs> <laughs> um, Perfect time. No, I'm fucking stoked. Like, obviously fourth isn't where I want to be, but I think, like, the time that I put down today and the actual race run itself and the craft around it was, like, just a win for me today. So, like obviously I got third in um, Andorra, but this one just felt way better because I'm um, snowshoe is literally a weakness of mine. So shit at it. The weakest of yeah. weakest. <laughs> like doesn't suit my riding whatsoever. And I just felt like I haven't bettered my result here, but definitely bettered my performance. So I'm stoked. Thank you. This. Who are them few girls? Wow, look at that. I mean, <laughs> we came all the way for a chain. <laughs> we came all the way here, spent all that money for a chain. <laughs> it's not even a decent chain. No, that don't don't put any of that. <laughs> this is the reason we come to Mont Saint Anne for the souvenir shop. To the world of souvenirs we go. 
Oh. That would be amazing. My new love. This is her new love. A new love. New hat, new love. Yes, new love. And welcome to Quebec. And this is? Have a nice vacation, Quebec. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Yeah. And this is how we roll. How we roll. <laughs> Okay, I got school by this guy, I just got school. Oh. Shane is such a knee, can it? Slow and then okay. It's my first time ever. Other than like mini golf. 17. <laughs> <laughs> we are in what's an Anne? Montanan. Montanan. Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, last race of the season. Probably maybe the best downhill track on the circuit. A track that both Phoebe and Tane have won at and potentially had the best performances of their career to date. Like I feel like coming in I've got a bit more confidence in Snowshoe. I've got good vibes from last year. Like to achieve just a solid quality run and just not, not pushing too hard any of that stuff, just get down and then race run. I'd just love to have a good one. I definitely preferred the track in Monsonana. It was a lot faster and just a, like more physical. It was sick, like such a good track. That's what everyone knows and loves in Monsonana. You just the riders come in underneath the underneath the lift, just hook some roost on some big filthy man-made berms, and then just hit these whooped-out grassy sections. That's kind of like downhill motocross, basically, and then into the woods. Fans are in there screaming. Everyone's kind of like cutting sketchy lines across these big rock slabs and. Eventually you're out there sprinting to the finish line. I felt quite good coming into it. I actually had a good week, like, I was feeling good on the bike. Probably the best I felt in practice from snowshoe. Just like, riding some sections is how I wanted to. Bike was feeling really good. When I was warming up, I was like, right, come on. This is the last, like, run of the year. Like, this is my last chance to do a finals run. After this one run, I'm done for the year. That's mad to think that. I was like, oh, please, can I just get a good, like, good one in the last one of the year it'd be so good to end the year on a good one but then i had a pretty big crash in practice hit my head pretty hard wait wait go keep your head still keep your head up keep your head still oh yeah you're good you're good you're good just did my quality run in months and then after my big crash the day before got into like 23rd at the minute Pretty stoked, just need to rest up tonight and fucking get it tomorrow, like. Oh, Tani, save me one of those jerseys. Going into Monsonan, I felt like I could win Monsonan. To have that feeling was nice because it's been a while since I've had it. Tane's journey this year has been one that has just exceeded anything we thought was possible. What that girl has achieved is unbelievable. It's 18 months after her initial kind of concussion accident and to see her all the way through the year and deal with what she dealt with. Until you go through it and until somebody close to you goes through it, you'll never understand what actually happens. It's crazy to think of where she was this time last year, but also January this year. She was like, I think I'm ready to race Lens Hyde and Leah Gang, those first races. And like, as long as I can get down, I'm happy. As long as I can put down a run against the clock in some way, shape or form, I'm done. Like the first race of the season, everyone was telling me, it's great to see Tani back. And in my head, I was like, well, she's not back. I just wanted to see her cross the finish line. First race, she gets seventh place. We were fucking teary eyed at the bottom of that run. And then suddenly from getting from top to bottom at qualifying at Lenzerheide to having an entire season where she raced every single race ridiculous crashes, two of which were probably some of the biggest crashes she's ever had in race runs. The main one that sticks out to all of us, not just me, is, is Tani's crash in Fort William. Fort William, riding after that crash, I was like, no way, she ain't riding, like, I know Tani. And then she did, and then she came sick, and I was like, ooh. She realized that she can get hit hard and still come out 
unscathed. After that incident, you could see her getting stronger and stronger. Each of these moments are unbelievable tick boxes for her recovery and her journey. Slowly ticking off this whole mental journey as well and understanding what she can do. She grew throughout the season and it wasn't until that moment in Mont St Anne where you can genuinely say she's back. I had high hopes until it started raining. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, Did my quali just about got in and then another flat in finals. It's just annoying I had so many little like things happen to me throughout the year. Like three of eight finals I think. My race was done because of a flat tire. I was gutted to crash because I feel like if I'm the right and the fact like I was dealing with the, the rain that I right and I was actually enjoying it. I had a good one, probably my best one of the week. And I felt like after that I was like, oh, I did deserve to be in finals and like, yeah, I was happy with my splits and stuff as well, which was cool. And then Tani came down then, she was on a heater, I was like, a oh, fair play, like she's going fast. I haven't felt like this in a long time, but there are some sections where I'm like, there's no way anyone's going faster than me through this section. So that confidence was like, I haven't had it in so long, so I was just riding the wave. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna have to make a decision. I was like, I know some of them rode the rock gun really fast and they were all right. So I was like, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna ride it like it's dry. I'm gonna keep to my dry line. The rock gun was so slick, it was insane. I was like, how are people not dying? Me and my mum, Len, we were watching it. Those rocks, man, they are so slippery. I was like, oh, she's coming through them now. I crashed in the rock garden because I was riding it like it's dry. There's no way I was going to make it through. <laughs> when I picked my bike up, my brake lever was bent and my mech was like in my wheel and I couldn't get going again. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to stick around here for a bit. And so I ran over to the left side of the crowd and gave my gloves away. And then somebody handed me a beer. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> I was like, oh, whatever, go on then, one for Stevie. And everyone was cheering and just like, I've never experienced something like that. Seeing her back like that was, yeah, insane. Just didn't expect it, yeah. Legend. You know, the confidence was there. The confidence to do what she did was like, you know, crash, get up, chug a beer, crack on you know, cross the line with a smile on her face. That is the Tane I've seen of the past. I think I'm enjoying every moment a lot more now. I would way rather be the athlete I am now, take less wins and not have that bully in my head and experience moments like that than like win everything and just be miserable. She's in good spirit. She's still like happy with what she's done. And I think it also comes back to the kind of core of what racing and everything means to her. It's about having a good time and having fun. To see her enjoying herself and to see the smile back on her face is probably better than seeing her win. I'd rather take a happy Tane over a winning Tane any day of the week. You can just tell that she's having a good time again and that's all, that's all I care about. Oh my God. We're actually through the season, relatively unscathed. We've had a few crashes. Tane's not made finals and she's still sitting in, a, in quite a good position overall. So ultimately, it's, it's not bad at all. You know, we can't really complain about it. Just no fairy tale ending this time. Uh, I don't think there has, I don't think there's ever a fairy tale ending for us, is there? Listen to me, woe is me. <laughs> We've had a great time, man. <laughs> I'm just so, so lucky to have the people around me that I do. I've been worried that this new athlete is not, will not be enough to like win again. I've had a good year and I hope you guys enjoy the season watching it.
you've watched it this far, you know this is how we roll and we have this sick bike that you can win. So this is a full FMD spec Canyon Torque, size medium and obviously in pink. To enter, all you've got to do is follow the instructions in the description or check out the Canyon Collective and FMD Instagram. Good luck. In the meantime, I'm gonna keep her safe.